Hello everyone, I'm your host Sunlight and today I'm welcoming you onto the new series of Globe Talks with Traders. If you want to know more about the ins and outs of crypto trading, then don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. Today I'm delighted to welcome onto the show Tiong Hong, CEO and co-founder of Satori Research. Hi Tiong, how are you? Very good, hello. Good, good. So uh, let's jump right into it, shall we? <laughs> so, so, can you tell us a bit about your background and how you got into crypto trading? Sure. Uh, so basically, uh, I started my career in trading about 20 years ago. So upon graduation, I joined the TradFi world. So the first place uh, I worked was within Goldman Sachs. So I worked in the Goldman Sachs trading floor for about 10 years. It was a very exciting time where everything in the macro world was started to move. Uh, what happened was that China was admitted in 2001 to the WTO. Then you had the commodities super cycle. So everything, all commodities went this way. Uh, then I traded, uh, you know, basically fixed income currencies and commodities on the desk for about 10 years. And then JP Morgan chief investment office uh, hired me from Goldman to run their balance sheet book out of Hong Kong for about seven years. And then five years ago, this company called SPI Japan, SoftBank Investments, they hired me to start up two trading desks for them in crypto, one in Hong Kong and one in Tokyo. So I worked there for over two years. And then uh, basically I ran their digital asset exchange as well, which was based in Tokyo, SPI VC Trade. And in 2020, myself and a few other partners we left SBI to start up this uh, company called Satori Research, where we focus on asset management, trading, market making, and blockchain utilization. Uh, wow, so it seems you have a lot of experience in trading. Um, can you tell us about any differences between you know, TradFi and crypto trading? Well, TradFi and crypto, there is a lot of difference now. And given that you know, crypto is still a relatively new asset class. It's, Bitcoin is only 12, 13 years. So it is still a very volatile asset class. So what it means is that we have much more opportunities to capture the big movements in crypto, whereas a more mature asset class like equities, well, most equities tends to be more stable. So the difference is in the volatility. Um, so what is your strategy when trading? How do you, you know, formulate your analyses? Right. So for Satori Research, we broadly run two types of strategies. The first strategy we run is what we call the market neutral strategy, where we do not take an outright long or short. What we do is we look at the different contracts in the futures contracts, the physical contracts of the cryptos different cryptos, and then we will find any pricing discrepancy. So what we would do is we would arbitrage these contracts. So that's market neutral. The second strategy that we employ within Satori Research is the directional trend following strategy, whereby we would take an outright view of whether a particular crypto would go up or down. So for these kind of strategies, we would do a lot of back testing, and then we will find technical points where once it reaches or it reaches that level, we will initiate either a long or a short. Yeah. Um, all right. To speak a bit more on volatility, uh, you know, let's let's be honest, crypto is quite volatile. It so is. so um, how do you, you know, navigate days when there is, you know, extreme volatility in the crypto market? Right. I mean, like volatility is part and parcel of trading, whether you're trading equities, you're trading commodities, you're trading currencies. So in the case of crypto, the insane amount of volatility that we have means that, you know, we have to measure and we have to manage the risk much more prudently. So it's, it's pretty much the same. So what we have in Satori Research, is we have a list of rules that we adhere to very strictly. It's about 10 rules, but I will just, you know, for the sake of brevity, I'll choose maybe three that we really focus on. So one is sizing of a trade. So for example, when we put on a trade, whether we're going long or we're going short, we would always size it properly and in regards of the liquidity of the market and the volatility. What it means is that the position shouldn't be too big, whereby if it goes against us, we will lose a lot of money and we'll get stopped out. Neither it should be too small, 
where if we get it right, we don't make much money. So wheat sizing is very important. The second thing is we look at um, stop losses. Whenever we put on a position, we will always at the same time put a level where if it goes against us, no questions asked, we will get stopped out. And then we will rethink the strategy. And the third one, which most crypto firms may not have is real-time position management. So crypto as an asset class trades 24-7, 365. So what we have in Satori research is that at any point of time, we would know exactly the positions that we are running. And the reason is that crypto exchanges, you know, it has improved a lot, but some of them still go down. This could be a server problem, it could be a machine problem, or it could be something internally. So at any point of time, if our risk changes dramatically, we will get a notification. And at any point of time, we would know the exact positions that we have across the constellation of products that we trade. Oh, okay. So it seems like you have a lot of um, strategies in place to, you know, kind of make sure losses aren't too great in terms of volatility. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. sound like this is something that the traditional banks and we have, you know, basically I worked for 17 years in TradFi. So they, these banks, they manage the risk really carefully. And because of the risk are large, you have a group of quants that continuously monitor and a group of middle office, back office people looking at all the risks. Whereas as in a crypto class, things are still pretty patchy. So we, we are focusing a lot on managing our risk carefully. Absolutely. Smart move, smart move. <laughs> so, um, so at Satori Research, can you tell us about any milestones or successful days that you'd like to tell us about? Right. I mean, uh, we have uh, since spinning off from SBI, we have been operating for about two years. So, I mean, I'm proud to share with you and the audience that Satori Research has two investors, external investors, and these are very pristine names in Alan Howard, who is the superstar swashbuckling hedge fund trader from London. And also we have an LP investment from Alameda Research, which some people may know it as FTX. So these two pristine names have invested in our company, which is a testament of the understand that we we do a good job, we manage our risk well, and they like our company. Okay. Yeah. So actually, to talk more about risk, what was the riskiest trade you ever made that paid off? Well, I mean, like uh, in Satori Research, again, we have a fiduciary duty because we manage money for clients. So we do not do, and we do not put a trade on the, our wins and fancies. We basically do a lot of exhaustive work before we put on a position or a strategy. Therefore, the riskiest trade, all, we look at all risks as the same in the sense that we do not wake up one morning and I feel lucky and I buy a lot of Solana and it goes up and I make a lot of money. What we do is that each and every trade, we quantify what's the risk profile and then where is our risk appetite and how far do we think this risk will go, this position will make money or when we are wrong, where do we get out? So to be honest, managing money or is quite, it could be quite a boring job because we are looking <laughs> at numbers. We are churning, churning out numbers and see you know, whether a certain risk makes sense, whether a position makes sense. So to your question, what is the riskiest trade we put on and we are happy or we made a lot of money? We look at most of the risks as similar. Okay, cool, cool. So um, in like a bearer bull market, which is better to trade in? Well, I have to be very honest. In a bull market, nearly everyone makes money. It is a much easier market to make money when it is a bull market. And however, the last three, four months since around November, December, the crypto market has turned quite bearish. So what separates the good traders and the general traders or the normal traders is that how, can, how well can you perform in a bear market? So for us in Satori Research, the last four or five months, some of the strategies we run, we do it in a much more conservative way. And therefore our drawdowns have been very minimal. And in fact, in certain months, we were still making money in spite of the big drawdown in the market, Bitcoin jump from, you know, dropped from 69,000 down to 35, 36,000. We are close to 39K today. But the thing is, we manage, we manage the risks very prudently 
rules-based, and therefore, even in the bear market, we survive. So to your question, I will say that in a bull market, it's much easier to trade and it's much, much more relaxing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what are your goals for the rest of 2022? For the rest of this year? So we, Satori Research as a company, we have been operating for two years. So for the rest of the year, we plan, we have three pillars of business lines. Naturally, asset management is one of our most important pillar. So we want to grow our AUM by triple. The other two pillars that support our company is basically trading and market making. So we do, produ- uh, we do provide prices to exchanges. We do provide services to exchanges. So we want to ramp up on that business as well. And the third one is much more ad hoc. In an investment bank, you will call it probably like a advisory and reach research. So we want to ramp up on blockchain utilization advisory job as well within the firm. But first and foremost, we would want to focus on building up the AUM of our company. So Tiong, do you have any tips for newbie traders? Well, when I, when I started my career in trading in Goldman Sachs 20 years ago, my one of my earliest mentor. Uh, who is now a big-time trader in, uh, in a fund called Diamond Asia, Danny Yong. He is a CIO, co-founder of the fund. He always tells me, plan your trade and trade your plan. What it means is that if you have a view, if you think that a particular product asset is going to go up or down, then you have to make a good, you have to plan for the trade. Do you want, where do you want to go long? At what level? And what's a conviction? How would you size it? And then trade your plan. When it reaches that level, you should execute it rather than, okay, I think it's, I think Bitcoin is going up 10% from here. And then, you know, you don't do anything. And then it goes 10, 10% from here, then you basically be kicking yourself. But then naturally, when you put on a trade, it may or may not work out. So when you are wrong, where do you get out? What is your game plan? And therefore, what happens is that, you know, you would trade with less emotion. You will always be unhappy if it goes against you, but that's part and parcel of trading. So if you plan your trade and trade your plan, it will eliminate a lot of emotions, a lot of, uh, it, will elim- it will eliminate some emotions and it will make your trade much more smoothly going forward. So just before we close up, can you share your favorite crypto asset right now? And, you know, disclaimer, this is not legal uh, financial advice. <laughs> Well, I mean, like if you put a gun on my head, usually I would say Bitcoin. And the reason is that, you know, Bitcoin has been proven to be stable, reliable, and it's constant. However, uh, you know, in reality, what I always do is that I manage a portfolio of my cryptos. So each and at every point of time, I would have a percentage of Bitcoin and Ether. It could consist between 60 to 70% of my portfolio. And then the other 30%, depending on the season, if it's an alt season, then we probably have more Solana, AVAX. It's basically changing the composition of the portfolio that we have. But for right now, given that you know this year it's going to be a little bit more challenging as US are going to hike rates. So we, I personally am staying more conservative on a conservative side, which means that I have more Bitcoin in my portfolio. But naturally, the high quality coins like AVAX, Solana, does feature in my portfolio, but at a much smaller percentage. What are your next steps at Satori Research? Well, right now we are, uh, you know, it's summer, so we are hiring interns from uh, schools in Hong Kong and also actually globally. And one thing we have noticed is that the quality of interns applying are so high. So the intellectual capability of people coming into the crypto world is so high that it reminds me of 10, 15 years ago when I was in Goldman, I used to run the internship program. And then we used to have a big list of uh, students applying from big schools and very smart people. And this is what I'm experiencing right now in the crypto world. Amazing. Wow. So it seems very competitive, no? It is a very competitive uh, landscape right now. So the next step is that for us, we need to identify good people bring them into Satori Research, and then 
nurture them, cultivate them, and hopefully, you know, we can grow into a much bigger boutique investment bank for crypto. Absolutely. So, you know, just for anyone watching, um, apart from intelligence, what do you need to succeed at Satori Research? Perseverance. And the thing is that, the thing is that we work very long hours. And also, given that, you know, we are still kind of a, like a startup, whereby, you know, we do different things, we wear different, you know, we wear multiple hats. So an intern who may be smart, but the thing is, you know, you have to persevere and you have to learn different things from different partners, from different uh, colleagues. So I think perseverance is quite important in story research. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to give us a like, comment and subscribe. So thank you so much, Tiong, for taking the time out and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.